Hello and welcome to lecture 28 of Math 1B03. As you can tell, I'm back in my office today to present today's lecture. The camera on this computer is not that awesome, so I think I'll just make myself disappear right away. So today what we're going to be doing is looking at section 5.1. So we're going to be doing a new chapter today, and this new chapter is on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So you may have heard of some of these terms before. If not, that's okay. I'm going to be introducing both of them. And so to introduce both of them, I'm gonna kind of like take a step back and kind of go back to some of the material from chapter one. Okay, so let's just recall something about a square matrix. So if we have a square matrix, then we also know that A defines a linear transformation from Rn to Rn, and the way that it works is it takes a vector and it sends it to a new vector in Rn by multiplying that vector x by the matrix A. And as I said, Tx takes x to a new vector, and this new vector, because they're both of them are in Rn, so you start with a vector in Rn and you get a new vector in Rn, it takes, a new, it takes x to a new vector either by stretching and or rotating the vector. So you start with an original vector x and you may uh, you get a new vector which may end up by you either stretch the vector and or you you rotate it or change the direction of the vector. So let's make this a little bit clearer through an example. So here's a nice square matrix, it's a two by two matrix, and I start with the vector one, two. So let, let me actually plot that vector one, two. That would be roughly right about here. So this is my vector one, two. And now I'm going to multiply that vector x by the matrix A, and I'm going to get a new vector. And the new vector that I get is I get five and seven. Hopefully I did my arithmetic right. And so we can plot this where this new vector is. And this new vector, and this is not going to be to scale, is somewhere over here. So we have five, seven. And here, let me put not to scale. And what we see is we can think about your original vector x, and it gets mapped to this new vector, ax. And what we've done is we stretched the vector and we rotated the vector. So, the new vector is stretched. We made it longer. It could, we could have made it shorter and we rotated it. So it's now pointing in a new direction. Okay, now, not every time we do this, we're going to get a vector that changes its direction. So let me be a bit more precise. Here's another vector x, and we're keeping our matrix A the same. So let me first plot where the first vector was. So this is the vector 1, 1 right here. And if I multiply this vector 1, 1 by our matrix, we get 4, 4. So I go to plot my new vector, and let's just use a different color so we can see what happens we get this vector over here. So this is the vector for four. So what happened in this particular example is that the vector x only st gets stretched. So what we have is that a only stretches I can't spell stretches today. Let me try and give another go with that. Only stretches x. So there, if we look at these two examples, multiplying by a does kind of can do two different things. It can take a vector and send it into a whole new direction and stretch it. Or you may have the case that a vector x, when you after you multiply it, you haven't changed the direction of the vector any at all. So one way to think about what's going on with an eigenvalue and an eigenvector, especially in the case of when everything is over the real numbers, is we're trying to capture this notion that an operation is only stretching a vector. You're not changing the direction. 
And so that's how we're going to define an eigenvector. So an eigenvector of A is a non-zero, so it's very important that you pay attention that you have a non-zero vector here. It's a non-zero vector x such that a times x is equal to lambda times x for some scalar lambda. Right. So on the left-hand side, you can think of this as a, a linear transformation. And on the right-hand side, you're stretching the vector x. So we're looking for those x that the matrix, e, matrix A is the same thing as stretching. And the scalar lambda is called the eigen, is, well, maybe I should say it like this, is an eigenvalue, and that's the key word here, an eigenvalue, and x is the eigenvalue, x is the eigenvector Uh, or is the corresponding, is the corresponding, having a little trouble here today, corresponding eigenvector. Okay, according to the uh, eigenvalue. So if we go back to our example uh, that we've been looking at, what we have is the vector x is an eigenvalue of the matrix A, which is 3, 1, 1, 3. And why is that? Well, it's because when you take the matrix 3, 1, 1, 3, and you multiply it by 1, 1, you get 4, 4, which we saw before. But notice that that is the same thing as 4 times the original vector, 1, 1. And the corresponding, oh, I don't have enough room there. Let's put it right here. And lambda equals four corresponding eigenvalue. So that's kind of the scaling factor, okay, uh, what we stretched it by. So what we're looking at is eigenvectors. Eigenvectors are those vectors that when you multiply by A, it's the same thing as multiplying by some scalar. And the eigenvalue is the corresponding uh, scalar that we're multiplying by. So in today's lecture, we're going to kind of be looking a little bit more, pro uh, more at the properties of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And between this class and the next class, uh, this lecture and the next lecture, we'll explain how to find the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues of a matrix. So we'll pause here and then we'll continue on in the, uh, with some examples in the next part.